Now that type of religion, where there was an initiatory tradition imparting sacred knowledge to a select few, reached its peak probably in ancient Egypt. These, of course, are the three pyramids of Giza. And this, particularly for the members of the craft among you, is a very important building. It's Hosa's Pyramid. It is the oldest masonry <coughs> building in the world. It actually has seven steps, one of which is covered in sand, and it is held to represent the seven degrees of initiation. It was designed by a genius called Imhotep, who was not only a master architect, but is a, uh, for his medical knowledge, he was equated with the Greek Aeschylus. Spiritual knowledge in Egypt sustained an entire empire for several thousand years. And it brought the knowledge of astronomy and science in a worldview that we are still struggling to understand today. They had levels of surgery, brain surgery, that we cannot yet replicate. And you saw earlier on the three pyramids at Giza. Modern construction company led by a Japanese team of experts using modern technology could not recreate them. Every time they tried to build them, they collapsed. So the Egyptians had something we don't. <coughs> and it's called sacred knowledge, or Gnosis. The two kingdoms of Egypt were regarded as a living temple built by Almighty God, wherein man could perfect himself by some transformative or alchemical process. And that transformative or alchemical process <coughs> was spirituality. And under the panoply of a range of gods, it has been argued that truly Egyptians were monotheistic. And they dedicated their entire lives to the service of others. The initiates of Egypt were the hereditary priesthood and the pharaonic royal family. And unlike today, where we all go on mass to church, chapel, or synagogue, or temple, um, most of the religious rituals in Egypt were conducted by the priesthood alone. The general public only went on to join in on state occasions and special days. Now the priesthood and the royal family had all the privileges of rank, wealth, position, and power. But their knowledge, their sacred knowledge, was again used to sustain the people of the entire country. And again, we're back to this principle of service. 